<laughs> All right, so oil-related stocks really standing out in a really great session. That's because OPEC Plus may announce an output cut. We're talking about a million barrels a day when they meet in Vienna on Wednesday. Needless to say, that would be monumental. I want to bring in David Bonson. And, uh, David, you know, that kind of pullback in crude... <sighs> Listen, I mean, it's. I think the overall pullback is probably what's precipitated this, because I don't think a lot of people saw it coming down as much as it has, including OPEC. How likely is it that they would go through with this? It would be a historic cut. Well, I think it's very likely. I think the Saudis want to target about $90 oil, which is really around that number, that I think demand does not erode significantly. A um, hundred, 110, 120 demand erodes. And so at a higher price, you can make less money because you have less volume. 90-ish is less demand erosive and yet much higher margins than 75 or 80. And that's the spot at which I think the Saudis want to get it to. And boy, it sure doesn't look to me like that meeting that President Biden had uh, with Bin Salman <laughs> accomplished what this administration wanted. No, it didn't. By the way, I guess that 90 would be the sweet spot. I couldn't resist. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the plus one in OPEC. That makes this more of a political story, right, because of the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, it's interesting to me because we know Russia is a, a, a pariah, except we saw at the U.N. where, where the BRIC nations either voted, didn't vote against uh, any kind of sanctions or abstained. Uh, we know OPEC obviously working hand in hand with Russia. Is there some other is there some other storyline going on here we should be aware of? I just want to remind people basic economics that when you are a producer and consumer of a product, you only care what someone else is doing when they're the marginal producer. Their last marginal contribution is going to be price setting. Well, we could be the marginal producer. We've chosen not to be. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we've empowered OPEC Plus to determine global price dynamics of a commodity that is central to our own economy, both as producers and consumers. The story with Russia's role is that they and Saudi were at odds with one another in March of 2020 when COVID was starting and they flooded the world with oil supply and pushed the price near the zero bound. Now they're working together because they both benefit for nefarious reasons from higher oil prices all of this because we won't take control of our own destiny. It's a, it's a very definition of insanity. I want to stick with politics for a moment. About two hours ago, I watched uh, Quasi Quartang. He's the uh, Quartang, he's the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer of the UK. He gave an, a very impressive, full throw this speech about conservative economic values, talking about people keeping more of the money that they earn. I mean, what do you make of this sort of uh, the heat? that this new UK government has been under. I mean, everyone has declared them dead. Everyone seems to have gone to war with them. I'm, I'm, I'm reading where it really is a de facto war against Reaganomics. Yeah, I want to say two things about that. I saw the word Reaganomics in the show notes, and I love it because it most certainly was this time where we saw in practice economic theory working and, and pushing uh, pr productivity and output up as marginal tax rates came down. So as a policy, we associate it with the Reagan years. It was true in the John Kennedy years as well, I might add. But philosophically, this is just about classical economics. Adam Smith, David Ricardo, this is what we know. Economics is about incentives. When people get to keep more of something, they produce more that generates it. And, and I really believe that this attack over the last week was not political. It was philosophical. The, the far left fundamentally disagrees with the idea of people keeping more of what they earn. Wow. I tell you what, it's something to watch. Uh, it really, really is. And I, again, he gave an amazing speech. You're the perfect guest to have on this day, but I was lucky to have you today. Thank you so much, my friend. And Charles, can I say one quick thing? Please do. I was on your colleague, Gordy Cudlow's show Thursday, talking about this very subject. And there, Liz Truss's people reached out for more comments and, and backup. They take this supply side stuff seriously, and they watch Fox Business. Hey, that, <laughs> I already liked her, but now I love her. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> See you soon.